Hello, welcome back to this week's EKG. We have a good case for you this week with a 34-year-old male who just had knee surgery and tells you he hasn't been able to afford his medication for his blood thinners, and he's feeling very short of breath and having a lot of pain in his leg. You move to get your set of vitals. Here's what you see. He's tachycardic with a heart rate of 130. Blood pressure is a little soft at 105 over 64. He's hypoxic, so adding 85, breathing pretty fast, 30 times a minute with a little bit of an elevated blood sugar. So not many normal vital signs there, so we know something's going on. With his shortness of breath, we move pretty quickly to get a 12 lead, and this is what you see. I'll give you a second to take a look at it, then we'll go through it together. We'll do it the same way, just like always. We'll start with our rate. The computer is telling me that we have a rate of 137. Let's see if that lines up with what we're seeing. Uh, here's the QRS that lines up with a thick red line. We count down 300, 150, 100, somewhere closer to 150 than 100. 137 looks about right to me. Let's look at our rhythm. First two questions we ask, is it regular? And just a quick eyeball here, there's a pretty equidistant difference between the QRSs. I'd call that a regular rhythm. And then are there P waves before every QRS or not? Is this sinus and origin? And our best place to see P waves gonna be two or V1. Uh, P wave, P wave, P wave, P wave. Looks like they march out. So this looks like a sinus tachycardia to me, very regular. We'll move on to our axis. So here we look at leads one and leads AVF. Remember lead one is your left thumb. We're looking at the majority of the QRS vector. It's up, same with AVF, the majority of the QRS vector. Both of those thumbs are in the air. That means two thumbs up. That means we're good. We have a normal axis. We look at our intervals, QRS. We want that to be less than 120. We have a nice narrow QRS at 90, the QT, interval is less than 450 so that's also normal uh, very reassuring and then we look at our st segments and so i tend to look at this in territories 2-3 avf our inferior leads we're looking for uh, inverted t waves st elevation or depression oh look here inverted t wave um, also in avf uh, do we see any reciprocal changes with our inverted t waves in AVL, no, I don't. And then anteriorly, it's a little hard because the baseline wanders a little bit there, but I don't see any inverted T waves, and this looks like a good beat here, and our TP segment looks pretty uh, steady there. So I don't see any ST elevations, but I do see T wave inversion. And one thing I wanna think about in this setting with this gentleman who's hypoxic and short of breath and having some chest pain we do have a S1, Q3, T3 here. So if you look really closely at lead one, there's an S wave right here. And then this first downward spike right here, that's a Q wave in three and an inverted T wave in lead three. So we have S1, Q3, T3. Um, and that should make you think about possible pulmonary embolism. Now, S1, Q3, T3 is not always diagnostic of PE, but it should make you think about it. And when we say pulmonary embolism, what we mean is a blood clot in the lungs. And typically, what happens is someone develops, for some reason, a blood clot in their legs, in the venous system, for the legs if they haven't been moving or they're more prone to clotting or whatever the risk factor is. This blood clot develops in the venous system. Well, if you remember the veins, when they drain back to the heart, they go through the inferior vena cava, superior vena cava, to the right side of the heart, which is deoxygenated blood. And the next place that deoxygenated blood will go is to the lungs to pick up oxygen. And so as this clot is traveling towards the heart, the vessels get bigger and bigger and bigger until it gets to the heart. And then the heart's going to send it out to the lungs to get air. Well, then the vessels get smaller and smaller and smaller. So depending on the size of the clot, this clot can get lodged in the lungs and can cause shortness of breath, hypoxia, even some stress and strain to the heart. And that's what a pulmonary embolus where it usually comes from. It's a, a blood clot usually comes from the legs. 
people who are at risk for these clots, history of cancer or active ongoing cancer makes people more prone to develop blood clots. Cigarette smoking we know is bad for the vascular system in general, but also makes people more prone to developing clots in their legs. Extra estrogen, so any form of supplemental estrogen, creams, birth control, um, even pregnancy. Women are at increased risk for blood clots about uh, up to six months after they uh, give birth and then during their pregnancy as well. Recent hospitalizations and surgery, this is because a lot of people tend to be very immobile and the blood's just not circulating as well. And typically, very commonly after orthopedic surgery, so much so that uh, after orthopedic surgeries, a lot of times people will find themselves on anticoagulation medicine to prevent these blood clots that we know happen after a surgery. And that's the case with this gentleman here. He was not taking his anticoagulation. And then there's also genetic factors that make people predisposed to develop clots. So some things to think about when you're taking your history of your patient who's short of breath and hypoxic and you're wondering maybe they have a pulmonary embolism. Uh, you can ask about recent leg pain or swelling and their shortness of breath. Things to look for on the 12 lead, there's some, it's really tough to uh, definitely tell that you have a PE, but these are some things you can look for to heighten your suspicion. Definitely his history is very concerning with the recent surgery, not anticoagulated, so he has risk factors. Um, next, the number one thing you're going to see in a pulmonary embolism is sinus tachycardia, which is very nonspecific. We see tachycardic patients all the time. That can be due to pain, it can be due to infection, it can be due to anxiety, any number of things. But in the right setting with the right history, pay attention to sinus tachycardia. Um, the next most common thing you're going to see is inverted T waves in the anterior leads. Um, V2 and V3, we pay attention to those. That can also signal some other kind of ischemia as well, so not always specific to a pulmonary embolism, but can heighten your suspicion in the right setting. S1, Q3, T3 is the one you see in all the textbooks and they like to test, but really it's only present in 10 to 25% of patients. But this is what you look for. You have the big S wave in lead one, a Q wave in lead three, and an inverted T wave in lead three. That's S1, Q3, T3, which our patient incidentally had here. And then sometimes as that clot is bigger or more centrally located, it can cause strain on the right side of the heart. And these are the big dangerous ones. And you can start to see right axis deviation, uh, right bundle branch blocks. Any type of right heart strain could be coming from these pulmonary embolisms as they're increasing the pressure required to get that blood to the lungs from the right side of the heart. And then a real predictor of mortality, actually, it's more rare, but it's a dangerous sign, is if you start to see ST elevation in AVR, and we don't actually see that here. Um, but these are things to look for. So five things to look for on your 12 lead when you're suspecting PE. Not all of them are going to be there all the time, but as you put your history together in conjunction with the 12 lead, you can heighten your suspicion. So what we see here on this gentleman who ended up having a pulmonary embolism after his leg surgery, he's tachycardic and he has S1, Q3, T3. And he also had some, the one thing I didn't mention was some peaked P waves there, which also indicate a little bit more strain in that, in that right atrial area than normal, but very concerning 12 lead, very concerning history for a pulmonary embolism, and those are some things you can look for uh, as you move forward. So thank you for your attention today, and we'll see you next time.